Hello, welcome to the welcome flip side. Welcome to the flip side, Megan. Thanks yes. for leading us today. Oh my goodness, that was absolutely. So good. Thanks for preaching the so good. The breast man for the job. That's that me. Is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. True you story. Were, you were a senior. I was a junior, or a junior running junior for senior. <laughs> yeah, yeah, running for. Yeah. The worst thing you can and say. The the funny thing. Well, actually, not the worst thing. Apparently, I don't remember what he okay, said, true. but my buddy Ryan Richter actually made. A, an intentionally an intentional joke that was like moderately obscene uh-huh. and he got disqualified oh that's one of the reasons it was a big deal because <laughs> because somebody better. else like my friend had done this these inappropriate inappropriate juniors. and they had to make sure like we don't think that's Eric, but we need to we need to like yeah oh that's that's yeah. a great memory so, this is something great. to laugh about forever yes, yes all right well we have some questions Let's do it. Let's from jump you all in. thank you for sending them in we are going to get them to eric now all right first question Folks say good things and signs come in threes. Should I look for things to come in sevens instead? Oh. Well, I would say that both of those are not in the Bible anywhere. <laughs> and so I, yeah. I would not um, I would not hold out for three or four or seven or um, I think that's just sort of a superstitious thing that is not rooted in <laughs> reality. So I mean it is nice, you know, three sneezes, good things comes in threes. No, but I I, I would I would root your faith in, uh, in no, I wouldn't worry about that. Right. Yeah, I, hate, I feel like total Debbie Downer, but. No, I, but the whole point is like, we don't, you, there's no counting necessary. There's we no just, counting. Just looking. That's right. Just looking for the sign. That's right. To. Maybe his favor be upon us and our children. <laughs> Amen. Down, the whole thing. Love it. Love yes. It. Okay. Um, Jesus also says, a wicked and adulterous generation looks for a sign. That's Matthew 16, 4. So am I to look for a sign or not? Oh, great. What Love that. Love that question. Love that question. So, and thank you for putting the reference, Matthew 16, mm-hmm. 4. Excellent. So, the thing for us to recognize here is that in John's gospel, he is using the word sign very specifically. So, there are seven specific signs in John's gospel. Uh, spoiler alert, culminating with the resurrection <laughs> of Jesus as the ultimate sign. Yeah. And then in, ver- in chapter 20, verse 31, he says, and these signs are given so that you m- might believe Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and by believing you may have life in his name. And so it's the word, it's, you know, like in language, a word means something, but then in the context, it gives it its more full meaning. So we have a more full meaning of sign from John's gospel than in Matthew, because really the word sign technically just does like mean sort of miracle, um, but John is using it. So that's a great, that's a great question. And that's why sometimes the Bible takes some time to understand and interpret, but love it. Thank you for asking. Anytime we get like good Bible questions like that, it's fun for me, especially if I feel like I know the answer. Yeah. Well, and it's important for us to, to know so that it just builds our faith and our trust in the scriptures. So Right, and it's just, again, the, the blocking and tackling of context, context, context. Sometimes that's a few verses. Sometimes it's a chapter. In this case, it's the whole book. The context mm-hmm. is the entire book of John versus how Matthew is right. using that. No, that's good. Yeah. Okay, next question. I have nothing to offer Jesus and recognize only he can offer me what I am seeking. How am I not using him when I come to him even in this posture? Another another great question. Yeah. I, I think, and I would love your, your thoughts on this, Megan. To, the thing that stands out to me is the posture. When we are coming open-handed, Jesus, I want to receive from you whatever you have to give. I believe in you. I trust you. I put my faith in you. You know what I need, right? He tells us elsewhere. He tells us elsewhere uh, that, you know, you don't even need to, he knows what you need before you ask. Mm-hmm. But he also tells us to ask. Like, we should ask. We should pray. Yeah. Ask, seek, knock. We should ask. Mm-hmm. We should boldly ask God for what we need. Mm-hmm. But I think the difference is the posture that says, I trust you with whatever you're doing and whatever you bring me versus give me more bread. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What yeah. do you think? What stands out to I you? Know, I, that's what I would say, too. And, and thinking of it as a parent-child relationship, too, like, which is what we are. We, he is yeah. our Heavenly Father, yes, and we are yes. his children and him. Um, And so if you think about a child coming to the father, seeking and asking, um, it's not using that relationship. That is what a natural parent-child relationship requires, really. We we have a need for him and what he has to give us. So therefore, that I feel like that negates the thought of using him because we need him. Right. It's just like the, it's the difference between, right, a kid 
coming to us, one, um, one of your kids or one of my kids coming to us and saying, hey, dad, I, I outgrew my shoes or mm. I'd like a new pair of shoes versus sitting down at dinner and like, why haven't you given me new shoes? Right? Those are going to be very <laughs> different responses if our kids act like that. It yeah. reminds me, yeah. actually, of a sermon that I did a long time ago. I think I'm remembering it because at the end of that sermon, we gave away Chick-fil-A ch- chocolate chip cookies. Oh, yeah. This was yes. m- many years ago. <laughs> and the point, I think it was Psalm 55, but the, it's, it's funny because I don't remember very many of my sermons. But the point was, when God does something good for us, our, the best response we can have is, thank you, God. Mm-hmm. Would you do it again? Yeah. Just like if somebody offers you a chocolate chip cookie, if, if I give my kids chocolate chip cookies, I do not fault them if they say, thank you for the cookie, Dad. Can I have another one? Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, that's the natural response. Thank mm-hmm. you, Jesus. And here's what else I think I need or what I want. I trust you to, to mm-hmm. do what's best for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gosh, yes. Yeah. But it's right. When we think about the parent-child relationship, right? You love your kids. Yes. And I, I mean, the, I, I want them to need me. Yes. <laughs> I, it's a Well, you and Mike are good parents and you provide and you yeah, that's part of that relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. I love it. Love it. All right, we have another question. Um Jesus himself taught us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. Can you reconcile this example against the give me now mentality you warned against? Yeah, I again, I think the difference two, two two differences. One is this is what Jesus taught us to pray. Give us today our daily bread and to and it's asking. That whole posture. So again, it goes to posture. Think about the whole Lord's prayer. How does it begin? Heavenly Father, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So if we're acknowledging the relationship, my heavenly Father, your name be hallowed, your name be great. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Not my kingdom, not my will. And in that, as those first few petitions, your kingdom come, there will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then give us this day our daily bread. Mm-hmm. Forgive us our debts. Lead us not into temptation. So again, I think it comes to posture. It's not that we shouldn't tell God what we need, even what we want. It's the difference between a demand and a request. And, and I think that's, that's the, at the heart of that there. Yeah. Yeah. Good, no, good questions today. Those are great good questions. questions. Do you want to circle back around, see if there's anything else yeah, I'll came just check in real to quick. the old uh, It the looks old like Facebook. those are the them? four that we have today. Eric, is there anything we... Oh, there is something we're looking forward what, to tonight. What? Tonight, I was, I was going to say that. Sunday at 7, a time of worship and ministry with the Holy Spirit. Yes. It's going to be mm. great. It's it's really, I I was wishing that, you know, we only have so much time in the service, but it's so it's a time to sing. Mm-hmm. It's a time to be still. Mm-hmm. It's a time to practice spiritual gifts, hear from God, share a word if you have a word. What anything, yeah. what else, how else would you describe or it's, what, it's encourage someone to come? It's a beautiful time to come and you can truly come and um, you, you don't have to interact with anybody. You can find a seat and you can sit there and and sing or kneel and pray, bring your journal, right? You don't have, there's nothing required of you but to show up and expect that God will also meet you there. And it's it's so powerful and it's in Norfolk tonight, it's right? It's at the Norfolk campus, yes. Mm-hmm. There's no sermon, there's no teaching. Mm-hmm. It's really just, we're gonna be open to how the Holy Spirit would lead us. So yeah, it's gonna be great. A great way to practice. Thanks for leading us today. Yeah, I thanks love for hosting it. the I flip love side. It. Yes, thanks for, thanks for preaching. Hey. It's great as always. All is happy to be here. Well, have a great week. We will see you next Sunday on the flip side.